I'm going to leave it open to all the panelists here today. And I would like them to talk about the divide framework of inclusion, privatization, leveraging opportunities, and most of all, startup funding. Thank you, sir. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. First of all, my thanks to the host and officers for affording me this opportunity to introduce to you uh, the initiative of the government by the name of Special Investment Facilitation Council, commonly referred as SAFC. Since morning, we have been hearing a number of speakers, including uh, nobody else but the Prime Minister himself has said that Pakistan is a country of immense potential and opportunities. The Pakistani nation deserves a position and a stature in the community of nation much higher than where we stand. Uh, economically, a country of 204 million, 15th largest agriculture country, milk, wheat, maize, mango, citrus, all under 10 in the world. Uh, rice exports, you know, uh, there will be a lot of talk about IT, uh, so second largest entrepreneur manpower, seventh largest IT professional manpower, 70% cheaper uh, professionals in IT sector. You look at the mineral sector, uh, uh, reservoirs of about $6.8 trillion dollars they are under the earth and at places over the earth in the territory that we call Pakistan. A few months back, uh, about nine months back, a principal decision was taken that this is no more sustainable and we need to find a permanent answer to this. And a comprehensive plan of economic revival of Pakistan was chalked out. It had different stands. One of the principal stands of this economic revival was to get investments from certain countries, including China, GCC countries, and certain Western countries. And for this, a special uh, body by the name of SIFC was created. The need for this special body uh, was felt because whenever we went to anybody, we talked to any potential investor. And by extreme, extreme apology to some of the bureaucrats who are mostly sitting on the paper, uh, on the table towards my left, but the literal words that some of the investors, especially from the GCC countries say, they said that we want to invest in Pakistan, but your bureaucracy kills us. And therefore, we don't want to come to Pakistan. And therefore, this platform was created as a single window platform so that we can hold the hands of the potential investors and then navigate them through the puzzles of bureaucracy, policy regulations, federal, provincial divide, etc., etc., and materialize their investments. And this was a unique platform on the table, both the civil as well as the military was represented. Pakistan will provide as part of this whole concept, the infrastructure, whether it is the lands for agriculture, whether it is the natural reserves for mining, whether it is the technical human resource for IT or the potential for energy. This was to be contributed by Pakistan. The investments were to come from different countries, governments and private businesses. And then the technologies, they were to be shared if Pakistan and the investing country had that technology. And if there was a technological void, that technology was to be sought from a third country. So this was a triangular arrangement in which this complete concept of SIFC, uh, it was constituted. The decision making of this SIFC, it has three tiers. There is an apex tier, the highest decision making body, which is headed by the Prime Minister himself. Chief of Army Staff is resented on this uh, platform. He comes by special invitation. And then all the federal ministers, the complete cabinet, all the chief ministers, all the chief secretaries, and all the stakeholders who are one way or the other related to the economic activity in Pakistan, they are part of the apex body or the apex committee. And that's where all decisions are taken. 
That's the first tier. The second tier uh, below apex is the executive tier. It is headed by the Minister uh, of Planning, uh, a three-star serving General Officer of Pakistan Army who is Chief of General Staff. He co-chairs the executive tier and then all the important ministers, all the chief secretaries and all the federal and provincial secretaries, they are part of this executive committee. Under that, there is an implementation committee, which is headed by a special assistant to Prime Minister on Government Effectiveness, Dr. Jahan Zeb. He's sitting to my left. I represent Pakistan Army at the implementation tier. And then we have a number of working groups because we have five sectors which we are dealing with it right now. It is defense, it is information technology, it is agriculture, it is mines and minerals, and it is power and energy. The processes of government which were not resolved in years, they have been pending for three years, four years, we were able to take those decisions within say 10 days, 15 days or 20 days. So that's the kind of short circuiting, that is kind of uh, the fastening up of the decision making at government level. Defense, Pakistan has a fairly big uh, defense infrastructure and some of the countries, especially the GCC countries, they were very interested in sharing the defense technology and the defense hardware. So a working group is working on that. Uh, mines and minerals, I said that Pakistan has a potential of about $6.8 trillion. Bulk of it is either in Tharkol or it is in Chahe district. You have heard a lot about Rekodek. I'll not get into the details how we messed up with Rekodek and now Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah it is making very good progress. Pakistan, which is primarily an agriculture country, 24 million hectares of cultivable land. We import wheat, we import sugar, we import urea, we import pulses and what and what not. Uh, so uh, we want to make Pakistan from an uh, food dependent country to a food surplus country. So that was, was the purpose of it. Information technology, uh, I told you, we have immense potential, but we were not harnessing that. And as far as energy is concerned, expensive energy, not capitalizing on the renewable and the hydro potential of Pakistan. And therefore, the cost of doing business and cost of manufacturing, it had gone up because of uh, expensive energy. And to add to that is the shortage of gas uh, that has come up in Pakistan. So these were the peculiar problems of individual sectors. And now, Alhamdulillah, SIFC is authorized. Anybody who comes to SIFC and asks for a visa on the recommendation of SIFC gets a visa within 24 hours. And he need not go to anybody, Ministry of Interior or, or anybody, contact SIFC if you want a visa for Pakistan for any investment related projects it would be given to you within 24 hours. We think that the data which is coming out and there has been a substantial jump in the IT related exports of Pakistan. One of the contributing factors is this uh, increase in the retention ceiling from 35 to 50%. National space policy. This was stuck for the last 20 years. For the last 20 years, Pakistan as a state and Pakistan as ministries could not decide on a space policy. SIFC has got that policy approved in one month. That has been approved. The rules are now being finalized and this will open for Pakistan an whole avenue of Starlink, internet and communication and such like facilities. It was stuck for 20 years. 5G, I was just having a discussion with the technical professionals of uh, jazz, they have a difference of opinion, which we'll try to resolve. But we took up from the platform of uh, SIFC that we must roll out 5G facility in Pakistan at the earliest. 5G was stuck because of a stay order from Sindh High Court for the last 12 years. And that stay order from High Court has cost Pakistan about $1.1 billion. So now that stay order has been evicted, the spectrum is available and Pakistan is all set to roll out the 5G spectrum. Pakistan is basically an agriculture country, 9.8 million hectares of land is available in Pakistan, the water is available.
but because of non development of land and the massive massive criminal misuse of fresh water resources of pakistan that 9.8 million hectares of land could not be put to use within the last 5 months almost 1 million hectare has been prepared first maize crop we have harvested and 100% exported out of pakistan and now the second crop which is wheat has been sown on that 1 million hectare and within next 5 years inshallah 7 out of this 9.8 million hectares this will be uh, under cultivation in pakistan and that will inshallah make pakistan a food surplus country and inshallah come 6 months come 6 months in pakistan it will be all certified seed which can be traced through the qr code and no uh, illicit or no i would say wrong seeds they would reach uh, the farmers urea uh, in pakistan there is a simple formula from north to south put two bags of urea and one bag of dap per acre irrespective of what kind of a soil you have what is the problem for this a state of the art system by the name of lims land information and management system it's a satellite based system uh, it has a whole force of people who work on ground they have a tablet on their hand they do the soil analysis complete data is uploaded and every farmer he can know that how much of organic matter what is the condition of soil what is uh, the weather forecast for coming days when should he Uh, so the crop so on and so forth so now state of the art information is available and we hope that it will contribute in a big way in increasing the parika yield of pakistan uh, i talked about recodec huge potential but there is no connectivity there is no road there is no rail there is no water so by the kind courtesy of the planning division Uh, presently being guided by dr jahan zeb saab a complete master plan has been chalked out in which all these facilities are being extended to chahi district and despite all financial constraints maximum uh, money has been made available for these projects of immense national importance pakistan army is not getting a penny not a penny out of any investment any project that is undertaken Uh, say the uh, take the example of agriculture any joint venture which is done in agriculture sector uh, 40% goes to the provincial government 40% goes to the stakeholders and 20% goes into the research and development of that particular field or that particular crop not a penny goes to pakistan army pakistan army is able of safc just to facilitate not for any other interest ladies and gentlemen thank you very much i just conclude by saying that pakistan is through unprecedented challenges we all as a nation need to put efforts together to face the economic crisis and as i said at the start pakistan is a country and pakistanis as a nation deserve a much better place and stature in the comity of nations than what we all find ourselves in thank you very much thank you very much uh, for this kind introduction and for the invitation uh, i just spoke yesterday rising pakistan and again we are repeating the same story pakistan is rising pakistan is you know uh, now fully geared to write a new chapter so yesterday i was talking about philanthropy i talked about two uh, major initiatives in pakistan that is one of you know one is the benazir income support program which is the manifestation of the compassion of the people of pakistan the government of pakistan this is one of the largest programs in the world you know which are uh, promoting social safety net uh, nearly 9.3 million families which will soon be reaching uh, 10 million so these families are getting regular support from the uh, government of pakistan when we talk about uh, welfare uh we usually say that scandinavian countries are doing extremely well but if in pakistan we are supporting the poor people who say it is a charity so this is not a charity this is a right given to those people who have been left behind 
who are marginalized and who are um, disadvantaged. So I'm not talking about this charity and philanthropy. The other model I just uh, would like to briefly introduce is the Akhobat model that is providing interest-free loans to the poor people. You know, uh, people have potential, people have the skills, people have the desire to move ahead. But the basic thing is they don't have collateral. They don't have money. No bank allows them to you know, enter their doorsteps. So this financial inclusion is extremely important. And through uh, Akhuvat, we have inspired a large number of uh, uh, microfinance institutions to provide these interest-free loans to the poor people so that they can come out of poverty. So as far as uh, the investment is concerned, uh, these are two basically you know, uh, philanthropic object, uh, uh, projects. But we have experimented with many uh, other avenues where you can put your money with some you know, uh, uh, dividend expectations and the profit. Number one, we have established an institute of, and there are many such institutions in Pakistan, of tourism and uh, hospitality management. So please join us and uh, tell us that what kind of uh, management professionals do you need? Give us curriculum, give us demand, give us the, you know, what kind of uh, people you need, who we will produce, number one. Number two, uh, recently, uh, just now, I was talking to Mr. Niazi about the uh, 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 how can we enhance the number of professionals working in health sector. So we have nurses, we have paramedics, we have different technicians in uh, you know all those medical related fields. We just request you tell us how many people do you need in nursing, in taking care of the old and elderly for the uh, physically, mentally uh, challenged people uh, for all the such uh, disabilities. So we are now in a position, there are, I think, uh, more than uh, 40, 50 medical colleges in Pakistan who are willing to produce nurses and paramedics. So we can connect you to all those if you have, a you know, you're working in health industry. Uh, so we will be very happy to give you the great and uh, fully professionalized uh, people who can serve uh, over here. Number three is the IG. We have a large number of institutions. We have a consortium. And you just tell us that what kind of people do you need in artificial intelligence, in cyber security, in uh, uh, digital marketing. And, but there are a large number of uh, extremely important fields which are truly related to the uh, you know, market needs. So we are in a position to produce that human resource. So the investment may be in agriculture, as beautifully told by uh, General Saab, General Tabassam, but the, we can, you know, focus, we can take you to invest in human resource. You can invest in agriculture, you can invest in IT, you can invest in, you know, livestock. There are plenty of opportunities available in Pakistan. But the biggest asset which we have is the 240 million people, the you know, extremely vibrant community of young people who are willing to move ahead and uh, who are willing to you know, create history, not only for Pakistan, but for their own self as well. So any kind of uh, association which you need in human resource management, whether it is in financial inclusion, we have a large number of recently the Securities Exchange Commission of Pakistan gave license to four housing finance companies, for profit housing finance companies. There is dearth of uh, uh, 10 million houses in Pakistan. So we invite you to come to Pakistan and invest in housing industry and the basic infrastructure is available. We have a large number of database, even the best and uh, 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 programs like Akhubat. We have millions of the people's database which are willing to buy a home, build a home, renovate a home or improve the facilities. So there is extreme uh, you know, uh, um, lucrative um, and uh, possibilities to come and invest in housing. And similarly is the solar energy. You know, we will be very happy to connect you with the millions of the people who are we have been you know, able to include them in, through financial inclusion and in all these things. So the solar energy is another avenue where you can invest. 
So I have been given only four minutes and these minutes are, I think, near completion. But my story will continue. I will just request you that uh, investment in human resource is one of the best investments. So if you need good human uh, resource in health sector, in IT sector, in education, in finance, whatever the need you are, so we will be happy to uh, shake hand with the um, SIFC and uh, connect through this uh, um, you know, collaboration. We will be happy to be a part of that uh, uh, big effort. So thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Pakistan is waiting for you. Most of you are from Pakistan and love for Pakistan is in your blood. So now the stage is set and all your investments will be protected, safe and inshallah together we will be able to make Pakistan a better place and the whole world a better place to live in. Thank you very much. The question in your minds, what is this beyond? But if I tell you that we are proudly serving one out of two Pakistani citizens under the brands like Jazz, Jazz Cash, Mobilink Bank, Tamasha, Diodar, Garage, and I can also tell that our Pakistan Chief Executive Officer Amir Ibrahim is sitting here as well. We are extremely proud. Over the last decade, Vion has invested north of $10 billion in Pakistan. $10 billion. And we are not an investor that is here for the good days only. We have seen good days, bad days, and I'm extremely impressed when I listened this morning, Prime Minister talking about how to make Pakistan an attraction for the international investors. As well, I'm impressed listening Major General talking about the stability, predictability, and execution power SIFC is bringing to the landscape for investors like us. I would like to share with you our understanding in terms of why we believe in Pakistan. Vion operates in six markets. Pakistan, Bangladesh, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan. As you can see, we are kind of specialist in emerging markets which are underserved, which are still growing population-wise, and which actually has a huge potential in terms of digital asset creation. It was the 70s and 80s, everybody talked about oil and oil producing countries. Today, Pakistan is not one of our countries, it is our biggest market that we serve in, and Pakistan is a data producing country. Pakistan's data has to stay in Pakistan, needs to be processed by Pakistani engineers, and needs to be converted in cloud solutions like Garage, in entertainment solutions like Tamasha, in financial services solutions like Jazz Cash and Mobilink Microfinance Bank. You walk in Davos, you see two words, AI, artificial intelligence, actually the way I would like to name it, augmented intelligence. And it is up to us, people in this room, to make sure that we take the data in Pakistan and convert it into digital applications that will make the farmers in Lahore the best farmers in the world, doctors in Karachi the best doctors in the world, and the teachers in Islamabad the best teachers. We can do that by developing the technologies that will co-pilot them into their business challenges. We are committed to Pakistan, and our commitment is long-term. Of course, as foreign investors, we do have expectations. And I would like to, if you allow me, mention a couple of those. I was extremely happy to hear from Major General that the path for repatriating dividends and profits will be open for foreign investors. I'm also extremely happy to hear that there will be ease of bureaucracy when it comes to establishing new businesses, getting work permits, and getting visas. It's also very important that we work together 
to make sure the necessary regulatory environment exists to improve our infrastructure and to make sure that the data sovereignty of Pakistan is achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, as Vion, we are very proud of our company and operations in Pakistan. I would like to thank you for allowing a company like us to invest in your country. And I can commit to you that we are going to be the ambassadors of Pakistan everywhere in the world, inviting investors to come. Thank you very much. Honorable Mr. Vikram Segal, it is my distinct pleasure to be able to stand here and speak in front of you. And I find it's very difficult to say something new after listening to so many distinguished guests. I was so thrilled yesterday listening to resilient Pakistan, listening to the legacy Pakistan, listening to the pipeline Pakistan, creating opportunities for a lot of people. But the story I loved yesterday was the 10 million bank account over the last two years in Pakistan. Everything in our life starts with a vision. We stand here before you and salute Mr. Ikram Sagal's Billy 20 years ago, come here in Davos and trying to promote Pakistan and dedicating his time to help bank the unbanked. My company, 6G Digital, my previous company, Millicom International Cellular, we have been very focused in building mobile telephony back in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. In fact, my company was the world first mobile telephony company launched in 1981 in Sweden under the name of Convic. And then actually the second company we built was called Vodafone. In fact, the two first mobile phone company in Pakistan, Pakcom and Pactel, was also built by us. And across the border, Airtel, Skycell, many companies, all in all about 135 telephone companies, including 22 first telephone companies in Russia was built by us. So we understand infrastructure means something very important. Back in the 80s and 90s, building mobile telephony company was a game changer. But if we look at today, 2024, banking the unbanked, Mr. Sagal and his sons journey is definitely the game changer and the best what i heard over the last couple of days that the pathfinder vrg the initiative they have this is not only a pakistani initiative this could be cut and pasted around the rising economies of the world and that's the best part so Pakistan, in fact, could be in the forefront of helping tomorrow's economy. We stand here in Davos and we hear two main words, two buzz words in the city. Number one has been war and rebuilding the trust. And number two is AI. Now, AI means many things into many people. War means many things. But if we look very deep down in core of our commitment to the world, I think the most important things are happening in the world today is the gaps between the rich and poor are getting bigger and bigger. It's between the have and have nots are getting bigger. So, what I hear from Pakistan is the commitment to use AI and many other things to change the life of the people that is so much more important than using AI for those privileged, less than 1% of the world population, maybe helping them 
to go from Mac 0.95 in their corporate jets to Mac 1.05 in their corporate jets. So AI listening to Major, Major General before, I think Pakistan is using it in the right way. And I'm very happy to be here and have the opportunity to participate, listen and understand. And I can see a vision of banking the unbanked can be exported to many countries. In a short, my company at the moment, we are building digital bank in Canada, US, Europe, and Asia. And we are committed to work with Mr. Sagal to bringing digital money transfer to Pakistan over the next few months. And recently, my company is also in the process of bringing in NVIDIA powered, artificial intelligent power, digital data centers. We'll be very happy to talk to the government of Pakistan, how can we build data centers of next generation data centers, compute power more than 100 times than the most powerful computers in the world today. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I think uh, the journey of 20 years promoting Pakistan is worth it. To see uh, uh, regulated, no-nonsense, indiscriminatory approach that the strategic investment facilitation cell council will provide. It makes a great difference. There are a lot of frustrations one goes through uh, in uh, tackling with the bureaucracy. Myriad numbers of uh, permissions that you have to get. This foreign exchange repatriation. Just to give an example, we have a contract worth several million dollars. Uh, we are not allowed to keep a penny of it. We have to buy equipment from outside. Obviously, we then have to um, go through other vendors, etc., etc. Very, very easily, we could uh, buy it. So, these are very antiquated uh, systems. And um, uh, let me start backwards. Start with Mr. Zaman. Of uh, course, you heard one of the early investors into Pakistan. Uh, you know, and of course, his major uh, th this thing is about uh, into China and uh, all the work that he has done in Vietnam. But uh, I think what is important for us is that uh, we are trying to harness the tremendous energy in Southeast Asia that exists for repatriation of funds, which has never really been done in a systematic manner and 6D Digital is helping us do that. And we are very ha happy to have uh, Mr. Mushtaq Shamshuddin or the famous brand of Mustafa Shamshuddin here also with us today. Um, what can I say about uh, Mr. Khan? But uh, only say this, that our journey to being projected by the World Economic Forum's Edison Alliance would not have been possible with the first step. And that first step uh, was due to, uh, I tell you, very decisive move by Mr. Amir Ibrahim and um, Ali Nasir, who is here. And we talked to Ali Nasir first. And of course, I had long discussions with uh, Amir Ibrahim. And I came to know a lot about the telecom industry and all the reservations. But the paramount thing which I would like to say is what Mr. Khan said today, is the people, and talked about the people matter. And that $10 billion is not a small amount of money. And thank you for having done that. And we are very proud to be associated with jazz in many ways, and even today. Uh, one thing I just told Amir was that we were one of your first customers on the cloud. In fact, we had a lot of problems with the state bank because they would set data 
but ama is totally on the cloud today am i right salma on the cloud and alisha was responsible for it we got into the cloud so we are on the domestic cloud and because of uh, this thing. so then come back to sifc i said yesterday that um, i had a very special relationship with two people uh 29 ma and uh, one was jalal ali kuli and the other was jalal parvez musharraf totally different characters and um, uh, one became the chief army staff the other didn't jalal ali kuli of course has his own industry and today i'm proud that um on every industry i'm the only non family member as a family member on the board but also had a very special relationship with jalal musharraf and of course um, you know i brought him to davos but one of the things i kept telling him uh, of course um, it's expanded beyond even my own imagination was that you have to have an organization that will cut across like that unless you do that the investment will be lost and uh, you heard jalal tabassum speaking i had actually never met jalal tabassum uh, before in fact none of my other people had jalal kani will can here will kani is here somewhere right there he and jalal adnan went to see, see him just met the secretary we've been talking mostly to jalal aliuma but i'm so glad i'm so glad that sifc came to davos and in the center of let us say ground zero of economic activity that was is the ground zero of economic activity the center of the thing they could project that this is what pakistan is and this is what we can do to ease the investors coming into pakistan the very important you have to give the investors confidence you have to give them the feeling that uh, you know if i invest money i'll get a good return on it and if i get a good return on it i may be i may be able to repatriate my profits so i think that is very important and uh, uh, i know i'm i'm only sorry that we had only limited amount of time but we could uh, talk a little more and with the help of uh, charts and graphs but i'm sure he will do it somewhere in the future and of course let me tell you that i've already had one of my good friends michel molnari who's not too well came yesterday specially to shanshaw and of course talked to him briefly but also uh, that other people here sitting here want to uh, talk about it mr justin ho is here somewhere justin uh, justin ho is uh, also supposed to have um and he is uh, talking about uh, bringing uh, railways uh, you know with a big uh, chinese firm right i know for a fact that um, western countries are invest interested you know we had a project which we brought in about 7 8 years ago which went nowhere because of this road blocks everywhere which was basically what they were talking about karachi to goa the bot and uh, railways and then a bot on the main line right up to quetta and chaman but the point is uh, there are many things which can be done not necessarily by us but the point is somebody is there who must be able to keep the door open for you and that i think is very very necessary and i think the best i can say it because i you know uh, been in the army is that uh, you know you can do any amount of electronics but you requires the boots on the ground to kick open the door and get into the hut right and that boots will sifc will provide to ensure that the investor gets a fair return on his investment thank you everybody thank you people thank you